Hello. Our devotion for today is entitled, The Lord's Justice. And it is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, verses 14 through 21. The Pharisees went out and conspired against Jesus, how to destroy him. So Jesus, aware of this, withdrew from there, and many followed him. And he healed them all and ordered them not to make him known. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved with whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel or cry aloud, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not quench, until he brings justice to victory, and in his names the Gentiles will hope. In verse number 18, uh, Matthew writes, He will proclaim justice to the Gentiles. But, but what kind of justice is it that Jesus proclaims? Some people ask, whose side is Jesus really on? What does he agree with? The oppressed or the oppressors? Do not be mistaken. Jesus is on the side of the oppressed. Matthew saw that he was just like the prophet Isaiah had said he would be. One who wouldn't break a bruised reed or quench a smoldering wick. Jesus had compassion on the masses because they were so badly treated. He invited the working class and the oppressed into his very presence. And he knew how hard it was for a rich man to get into heaven. But nevertheless, it's impossible for us to have the sole right to Jesus when it comes to politics. Yeah, you heard me right. You can't confine him to a particular political agenda because he's the savior of all people. His criticism is aimed at all of us. We all need his forgiveness. Those who are mistreated and lost are found in every political party and in every social class. What did Jesus say about the wealthy man Zacchaeus? Well, it's recorded in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 9 and 10, where Jesus said, He also is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. How then does Jesus carry justice forward to victory? He does so not with usual political means. Jesus doesn't use propaganda. He doesn't challenge people to debate. He doesn't send his disciples out to demonstrate and shout slogans. No, remember what it said in verse number 19? Nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. One can win victories for justice in that sort of way, but those kind of victories are temporary and are constantly threatened by our quest for power that can throw its weight around and win the game in every administration and political system. But for Christ, it's a matter of achieving the victory over evil itself and over our sinfulness. The decisive battle took place on Good Friday. Christ was silent, and the masses streamed in the streets Christ himself became the bruised reed and smoldering wick that his opponents, the priests, the politicians, and the people thought they could crush and extinguish. But then, 
justice achieved the victory. First and foremost of our lost right to be God's children was restored. But also God's righteous law wasn't revoked by Christ's death. But it was fulfilled. And that victory for justice echoes in every heart that Christ has the power over. Now a new constitution exists. Our Lord is one, and we are all brothers. See to the best in others you live to serve. Christ's victory will not be complete until he returns on the last day. And until then, the battle continues to rage on even the political battles that have to be fought in this world, which demands both truth and justice. Until the last day, Jesus' mercy, which with infinite tenderness, takes upon itself everything that is destroyed and dejected in every camp and class and party. His justice will prevail. Let us pray. Lord, whose side are we on? Help us always to be at your side where you stand under your protection, shielded by your atonement, enveloped by your forgiveness, surrounded by your love. As your willing servants, may we always be prepared to stand up for your justice and make room for your love. May we always be willing to help those who are forgotten, left out, and badly treated. May we always be ready to stand up against injustices and abuses, even those caused by pure thoughtlessness and habit. Lord, lead your justice to victory in our hearts and in our deeds and in our people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's blessings. I'll see you next time.